trout rods, salmon rods, striper rods, helmet rods, downrigger rods, lead core rods, spinning rods, and more. If you want a high quality, high performance rod that won't let you down out on the water, go to fishhuntshoot.com and check out our selection of high quality, high performance fishing rods. Hey guys, it's about, I don't know, getting towards sunrise. Gina and I heard one of the rods go off on the deck of the, uh, of the houseboat and I just brought this monster in. <laughs> He ate a big glob of worms. That's about, I don't know how much he weighs. He weighs probably 10 or 12 pounds. I know this is horrible quality video, but look at that channel cat. I want to let him go. Uh, I'm not going to put him on the stringer. I've kept big guys like this before and uh, they're kind of funky. But that is a trophy catfish. He deserves to be released and uh, what a fight. I, uh, I had my cousin's bass rod out here and he'd taken 50, 60 feet of line and Made all kinds of crazy runs when I picked up the rod. All right, I'll throw this guy back in. We'll let him go and... Uh... Hey guys, here at Lake Shasta, the catfish bite has been surprisingly good. It's uh, late November, yesterday was Thanksgiving. The water's about 58, 57 degrees. Um, we're here in the backs of the coves. I've been catching fish, putting them on the stringer and then letting them go, I'm not gonna kill them. So let me, uh, let me show off a few of my cats here as I release them this morning. They're pretty cool. I've got this guy. Oh, <laughs> this guy here, he probably weighs, I don't know, he's uh, probably three pounds, nice fish, put up, a, put up a pretty good tussle. He grabbed a night crawler, so here he goes, back with you. Took a header into the motor, ouch, he swam the wrong way, but off he went, he's off and happy. Let me show you his buddy here. This one here, he's a little smaller. He's about two pounds. You know, if you've never handled a catfish, a um, couple things about them. They have three big spines, right? One there, one there, and one there. And they will stick you, and that is no fun. And they will also, and I, it just grosses me out when they do it, they will bite you. If you stick your finger in there, he will bite you. So, so don't do that, it freaks you out. But anyway, that's about a two pounder. Nice uh, Shasta Lake Channel Cat. This guy here ate some poultry liver. We'll let him go. Oh, wow. They can swim super, super fast. Now, this fella, he's a one pounder. He's kind of the runt of the, of the litter. He's the smallest one we've got so far. But uh, he's going, and he's kind of unique. See, he's got a he's got a double whisker going on there. You don't see that every day, or at least I don't think you do. I'm not a huge expert on catfish, but uh, I do enjoy catching them. And the big ones, man, they are a challenge. They are a lot of fun. They put up a great fight. So we'll toss him back. He ran into the motor too. Um, and here's the last thing I have on the stringer, and I got to keep this guy because he's just not going to make it. He's still alive a little bit. Um, I caught this fish on a chunk of turkey gizzard. Turkey gizzard. Wait till you see what it is. It's not a catfish. Look at that. Nice spotted bass, about 14 and a half inches long. And a really weird story behind this fish. I was trying to figure out what the catfish do in the daytime because I haven't had much luck fish for them in the daytime. So I put a rod here, put one of my trout rods here, downrigger rod, I put the clicker on, I grabbed the hook, I baited it up with that piece of turkey gizzard, and I paddled out over here into about 50 feet of water yesterday afternoon, I dropped it down. So last night I was sitting there and the line just seemed awfully tight, you know? So I picked it up and it almost felt like it was snagged. I started reeling, I could feel something coming up felt kind of like a stick and then as I reeled more I got a couple head shakes and I thought you know I thought it was going to be a catfish like that little guy there but no it was a spotted bass why you would eat turkey gizzard I don't know but he swallowed it he was bleeding all over so I'm going to end up uh, filleting him and uh, we'll fry him up I don't want to waste him. So this is just good old fashioned bait fishing. Um, you just don't know what's gonna hit. It could be a trout, it could be a bass, it could be a catfish, it could be a carp. Now we were targeting that catfish, but let's start out with the line I've been running for trout. And uh, this is the one that's been producing most of the, uh, of the bass as well. 
just got my you know my standard spinning rod here and what I've got it rigged up with is uh I'm using a, a night crawler on a on a small hook a whole night crawler but uh, what I've got here is a uh, a slip bobber I've got well let's go up from the hook I've got a swivel where my my leader and hook is attached that's an eight pound test fluorocarbon leader I've got a single split shot right there to get everything down I've got a uh, a bobber I've got a small bead on there I've got a larger bead that I can see and uh, let me drop this in the water so I can show you the bobber stop bobber stop is right bobber stop is right there and it's one of those uh, thread bobber stops it's chartreuse you can see it right there now this will slide up and down the main line the beads come to rest against the bobber stop in turn they come to rest on top of the bobber and your bait dangles down below the bobber whatever distance you have that that bobber stop adjusted now the nice thing about these these cloth bobber stops or the string ones is I can actually reel that in a reel but right now it doesn't quite go in a reel I've got that adjusted so the worm is about 10 feet uh, below the bobber and it's been kind of cool because sometimes the wind is blowing away from me and I got about 200 yards to the far shore I've scoped it way out over there um, last night the wind was kind of blowing out into the main lake so I probably had this thing 75 yards out it's kind of doing its thing um, I caught both the bass today just kind of back in this cove I went out there with my kayak it's about maybe 17 feet deep in the center and a little shallower around the edges so I just kind of been floating this back and forth up and down that channel and uh, every once in a while that bobber you know it'll move a little bit and bloop under it goes I call Gina and she reels the fish in now this is the serious rod here this rod I went to I went to bed last night and uh, I baited it up and I got one of my kayak tethers here hooked to the ladder so I I snapped it on the uh, on the real handle of the rod because um, I didn't want to wake up and have my rod gone didn't know what to expect we got here about three o'clock it's a little hectic so after we got all settled in I just baited this up and and casted it out what I have here I've got a actually a really kind of a fancy a cousin's tackle bait casting rod I've got a Daiwa level wind you know low profile bass reel on there and I've got 30 pound braid on it now here on the business end I've got let me pull a little line off here so you can see what I'm working with and I, I put some thought into this part so I've got that braided line it comes down to a uh, I'm actually using one of those trolling trolling weights but I've got that rigged up so it's uh you know it's a it's a sliding sinker it can slide on the line just I have a swivel right there I have 25 pound test P line for a leader and it is coming down to one of those old school of course it has a barbed hook to one of those old school kale shaped sturgeon hooks and the thing is with the kale style hook is that it, it's a it's it's a great hook to use if you're not going to set the hook if a catfish or whatever takes the bait this tends to rotate right into the corner of the mouth and uh, I've just got that thing loaded up I think I got three night crawlers on there right now now we haven't had any bites during the daytime but I'm hoping for great things tonight but I don't, I don't do a lot of catfishing anymore but uh, I know how to catch them it's a lot of fun night crawlers that's a great bait um, livers a great bait because um, we are up here for Thanksgiving we got a turkey on the boat here I'm gonna crack that bad boy open and uh, pry those giblets out I'll be using those for bait just kind of just kind of mixing it up um, and tonight I'm gonna be a little more serious I'm gonna sit out here with my headlamp on and put in a few hours of, of night fishing and and see what happens but those two rigs right there if you just want to go out and have some fun fishing get yourself some night crawlers a slide and sinker rig for fishing a bait on the bottom I'm casting out it's about 19 feet deep out there so a slide and sinker rig is great to put a bait on the bottom and of course that bobber it gives you options you can fish it shallow you can fish it deeper you can cast it you can let it drift you can do some different things with it so that's what I'm up to um, I'm gonna get this back in the water 
and uh, I might go out in my kayak for a while. It was windy this morning, but it's pretty calm right now. So I might uh, might take a little turn in the kayak here and see if I can get a trout on. So anyway, just wanted to show you guys a couple options. If you just want to go out and have a fun day fishing, just soak some bait. You don't know what's going to hit. It's very exciting. And uh, if you are looking for a great vacation, you know, you come up to Lake Shasta in the spring or summer, the houseboats are jammed. The lake is jammed. It's just crazy. Well, I called over to Bridge Bay. Um, I said, my wife and I would like to spend Thanksgiving week on the water. And they were like, no one comes up here during Thanksgiving week. Well, we're here. Pretty much got the lake to ourselves. See the occasional bass guy go by. And I see, I just saw a trout jump out there. So anyway, you see the occasional bass guy come by, but the, the weather's great. The lake is beautiful. Even the, you know, even down a hundred feet, Lake Shasta is a massive lake. So we are out here, we're getting our fish on. We've seen some deer, saw a buck up there. We've seen some coyotes and stuff, seen some ospreys. So all in all, we are relaxing. This is, this is Gina and I's first vacation in about 13 years. So we're having a great time. And uh, if you're into fishing, if you're into relaxing, get an off season houseboat on Lake Shasta. You won't regret it. You can fish for trout, catfish, crappie, bass, whatever comes knocking. So anyway, I'm going to get back to fishing. You have a great day. Thanks for all the support. If you're looking for rods, reels, line, trout lures, and more, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. I'm hoping to catch catfish tonight. I'm all excited. Anyway, I'll catch you later, guys. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off for now.